Good morning folks, thanks for joining me. Um, I'm Morris Donovan, I'm at Allstate Mechanical Repairs and um, this is my business, I'm the manager, the workshop manager, the owner and uh, today it's Saturday and I just feel a little bit relaxed today, have my green tea in front of me, and enjoy the green tea. Now folks, um, I've got a couple of preliminary checks I want to do today. I've got two vehicles in today and I would like to check them in preparation for my staff on Monday when they come to start a week. I've got one, I'll get my job cards. The first vehicle I've got that I'd really like to look at, and believe it or not, both vehicles have similar problems. This one here has overheated. We have a Kia, Kia Sorento, 2013, 21,000 and 51 kilometres, so virtually a fairly new car almost just run in. And it appears that the radiator cap has been either left loose or left off. Um, I have a quote here from a dealership. Um, they want to fit a new engine. They claim that the vehicle was towed in because of the, a loose cap was left loose. When they've checked it out, they believe the engine needs to be totally replaced with a new engine. They've quoted my customer $14,000. Obviously they bowed out of spending $14,000 in lieu of maybe an, a second opinion and another option, so I'm offering them another opinion today. Um, so what we'll do today, we'll have a visual look at the car first. I know it starts up, I've heard it run, so that's one good plus. Uh, we'll start by a visual and check the coolant to make sure there's water in the cooling system, there may not be. Uh, if there is, we'll um, fill it up. We'll probably do, let it run and warm up and do a um, test in the radiator with the CO tester where we have a chemical change of colour if there is uh, exhaust gases, CO gases in the um, system, in the coolant where there shouldn't be. Failing that, if that test is OK, I'll carry on and do what we call a relative compression test. A relative compression test is a quick way of um, checking the compression or even all the way through. It's an electronic way. I use a Pico lab scope. And we either use a low amp or sorry, high amp clamp around the battery terminal, whether it be positive or negative, it doesn't matter. But we'll use one of those clamps and we will just see by the waveform and we'll have our peaks. It'll be up and down and we'll have our peaks. And we can see if one of those peaks are down, obviously the amperage that's needed to turn that motor on a low compression is a lot less than the amperage of a high compression reading. And therefore we can pick it quite easily. There is also another section in PK called PK Diagnostics, which also has a very um, professional look about it where it does a similar test and uh, it's meant for presentation more than anything for the customer to see. I might run you through that as well, but I still rely on the um, low amp clamp or even a voltmeter, even putting a voltage test and watching the voltage dropping up and down because it does uh, uh, change the voltage when you draw heavy amps. Uh, uh, Ohm's law, you, the higher the amps, the more the voltage that you'll use. So we'll have a look at that and um, we'll just get an idea. The idea is to try and get a quick and um, thorough check in a very short period of time. Um, following all that, we, we would either then do, if, if, the, if there's no low compression on the relative compression test, we'd either then do a leak down test or maybe even use my gas analyzer. It takes a little bit of time to warm up the gas analyzer, so taking that into account as to whether I go down that track. But if the spark plugs are easy enough to get to, I'll probably go down the track of doing a um, leak down test. I think that's quicker in the long run. But if uh, I have to get my gas analyzer, we can have that warming up while I move on to my other job that I've got in today. This one is a Chrysler V8, 5.7 litre. It's a 2005 model. It's had a similar fate where hoses that go and lost coolant and overheated. This particular car I've heard running and I know for sure that it's got a misfire. So it's not a good um, gut feeling at the moment. I, I reckon that we have problems with that car. But we will diagnose that as well today. Probably similar with a um, relative compression test. I don't need to put my gas analyzer test in it because I just know that there's a problem there. But I want to see what cylinder is down and how far down it is and uh, just um, get a direction for the boys on Monday in that one too. So enjoy my cuppa first and just enjoy the quietness. It's so quiet on a Saturday. During the week I run the office, I do watch over the boys and I do find myself very busy during the week but on a um, weekend on a Saturday I can turn the phones off, the doors are closed, I can just enjoy just playing with cars out there which um, gives me a feel then for the um, 
hands-on side of the business. Um, I don't necessarily do a lot of hands-on during the week, but uh, I still think it's important for me to keep in tune. I keep my, my knowledge up to date with all the um, modern cars. I keep learning. I keep um, in focus with what's happening. Therefore, I can pass that knowledge on to my staff and others, but at the same time, without the experience, it's not quite the same. So I do like to have a bit of experience. So I hope you don't mind um, joining me today and as we go through our path of diagnosing these two cars, I hope I can teach you something and I hope, um, yeah, this is a beneficial video for us. Thank you. Okay, folks, um, I've just had a look at this car. I did a visual. Visuals are so important because um, you can find out a lot in the visual, no matter what you're diagnosing, whether it be a vacuum issue and you find a vacuum hose off. I found once a Volkswagen with the oil cap on it. So, you know, visuals are so important. Now, what I did, there was no coolant left in the um, system, so I topped that up and I thought to myself, that was a bit strange, so um, it's been to a dealership with no coolant, um, did they really check things? But I think they have, because what I found, which I'll show you in a minute, we'll just top it up, as we're topping this up now, full, I'll go and turn the key. Okay, folks, I think we understand there's a major combustion leak problem here. The combustion's leaking into the coolant system so badly that it's forcing the water like a fountain out of the system. So that's taken less than five minutes to find this out. I noticed that the dealership has written down here um, a, a list of um, what they recommend, a new engine, and it's cost the customer $302.50 just to probably do as little as what I've done, I'd imagine, I don't know. But anyhow, we're going to move on a bit. I'm going to find out which cylinders, it's probably two cylinders, I'd imagine, probably the two metal. But I'm going to find out, and I think I will do a relative compression test. We might do a PICO diagnostic um, check on the compression first, just to show you how neat and what that looks like, and that alone will give us an idea. Um, so we'll just head in that direction, I believe. Just We have to hook up our PICO. Um, so I've got my machine here, so I'll just hook everything up. Okay folks, I'm just about to do a relative compression test using Pico Diagnostics, which is a, as I said, a very um, well set up um, for presentation. It's not so much um, for the mechanic's eye, but for the customer's eye. But I think it's really appropriate to show you this first. And um, what I've done, I've hooked up the power and the negative to the battery. It does say you're better to get a better connection by going straight to the alternator. But in this case, I've used the battery because the alternator is just a little bit harder to get to. Um, a good ground, and all I have to do is click start and wind the key over with my foot on the accelerator as I would on a normal compression test when we do a static compression test. But today we're doing an electronic compression test, so I'll just show you guys. Okay, folks, we can see, um, this, I'll just get rid of this. It says down the bottom here, so there's one, two, three, four, alarm and compression, um, suggesting uh, it may have around 5.07 kilopascals down to 4.71, when one compression is much lower than the other, because the Chrysler is actually misfiring. This car, I, haven't, I have started, it didn't sound like it was misfiring, but I think the fact that um, there's no coolant in the system, probably masked the fact that it ran better than what it should have. Now I'd like to show you what I prefer to do with a relative compression test, the one that I use for better value and, and the way I do it in my shop. First off, I need this attenuator. It's a 20 to 1 attenuator, meaning that it will cut the voltage of the um, um, whatever we're testing down 20 times to 1 volt. So in other words, 20 volts would be 1 volt, but we see it on our screen as a normal voltage as what it should be because of PCO software. So for example, if I had 2,000 volts that spiked at one time from the coil, for example, it would only be 100 volts going into my PCO um, scope, which means it's quite a safe voltage. And it's obviously, um, the money I spend in my diagnostic equipment, I need to do what it takes to keep things safe so I can continue to use my equipment. Now, what I've done today, I've Set up my screen, and I'll go through that in a minute. 
But I'm going to use what we call, and I said earlier I was going to put a low amp, I don't know why I said that, but it's a high amp voltage clamp that I'm going to put around the battery terminal on the positive side of the battery on this. The reason for this is when we wind the engine over, we're going to read the amperage that, that starter motor is drawing so that we can get a pattern on the screen, a voltage. A um, lab scope shows us a time scale which is going across the screen and it shows us a voltage screen, a voltage up and down uh, as the voltages go up and down. Obviously amperage is not really a voltage, it's a um, flow of current, but Pico using this clamp the, changes that amperage flow into a voltage so the screen can read the amperage and it will um, read on the screen as a peak and a low, a peak and a low. And as we check the um, winding over of the car and check the compression, each peak of the compression, it peaks the amperage of the draw of the starter motor and then it comes back down once the compression is finished and uh, it leaves a lovely screen pattern that we can use. So I'm going to hook this up now. I made sure I've turned it on. Now, oh, I'll get over these cords. I do have these hanging up on this pole here, but it still gets in your road, you have to be careful. I've already fitted this to my other channel. I'm using two channels today on my scope. The first channel, channel A, is going to my coil. Not coil, yes it is a coil check the primary pattern. We're not really looking at the primary pattern, we're looking to find out where number one cylinder is firing. So when channel A is triggered off of um, the trigger setting, I've got a little star, a yellow star is the trigger, which is above the line of voltage at the moment. So when it triggers off of that, we start our pattern. And our pattern then you'll see the cranking go up because of the amps going up and you'll see the spike come up for um, the um, high voltage from the coil which will give us a point of where number one cylinder is. We know the firing order, one, three, four, two. We know then which cylinders are going to be low on compression if, are, if they show up in this test. So I'm going to zoom in on the screen now so you can have a look at the screen as I show you the settings and then we'll start our test. Thank you. Okay, I'd like you to have a look here. I've got um, up here, I've set the um, voltage rate at 100 to 400 volts uh, with using my 20 um, that plus 20 is my attenuator, which is the um, safety device for my PK. So we've set that there. I've ch chosen the speed of 200 milliseconds per division so that I can get a good picture over a broad screen there. And um, here I've set my B channel with my low amp probe to, six, to 100 to 600 amps for the, um, the screen. On the red side here we'll see along here the amperage goes up to 600 right up the very top there. And I've also decided to trigger this for a single only screenshot so that we can just, I can crank the motor in a minute and then come back and I can see my screen um, still, on, see my pattern still on the screen. So I'm about to hit the, oh, it's ready to run now. It's just waiting at the moment, it's just waiting for the um, voltage on blue on the A channel to reach that um, trigger point there where I've set it up there. So I should get a fairly full screen uh, of pattern once I start cranking. So we'll go to the key now and crank that and we'll just watch. Just go into the car and I'm putting my foot on the accelerator like I did before and I'm actually winding the key right now. Done. So that is it. So we'll have a look now. We can see each firing stroke of number one cylinder where the primary uh, pattern's been triggering and showing us where number one is. So we've got number one, one, three, four, two, back to number one. I can already see we've had some low peaks here. Let's just magnify this a little bit. Uh, we'll get our magnifier. Okay, let's get our cursor down. Just putting it down. Okay, can we see something? I can. We can see the peaks up there of those two cylinders. So number one and number um, Three cylinders are looking very good, but number um, three and number two cylinders are very low. Three and two are in the middle, so we now know our low compression is three and, three and two. How cool is that? How quick was that to find out? It's, it's just you know amazing how quick we can use modern technology now to, and using these lab scopes. And there's not a day goes by that we don't use our lab scopes in our workshop. And, and when you see the results we get from, from this sort of testing and how quick it is, uh, it just blows your mind, doesn't it? Um, but look, I, I now know where to concentrate on this leak. 
I don't really have to do much more. I, I know that we've got a bad combustion leak because we saw the water coming out. I know I've got two very low compression tests, uh, sorry, two low compression figures on two, the two middles. Not saying that um, number one and number uh, four aren't down a little bit either. We could do a manual compression test later. But look, I know um, the head's got to come off at least, if nothing else, and we have to look into this motor further. So I just today wanted to show you how simple it is to do things like this and uh, just how be beneficial it is in our workshop to have the knowledge to use these types of uh, modern technology. The lab scopes have been around for years, don't get me wrong, but in our workshops here, um, in our normal everyday workshops, I find very few mechanics these days um, take on board with, with some, of these, um, uh, some of this equipment and uh, they really do need to think about it. Okay, very, very noticeable is these um, burn times on both these primary um, waveforms are very messed up compared to, for example, number the blue track is number one by the way, number one. Uh, one this would be number red track's number two, number three, and green track's number four. So these two are the two cylinders that we discovered that were the um, ones of, that we suspect are quite bad from the previous test we did earlier. So I will investigate this now. I'll just put, stop here, and hold that, and turn the engine off. I think we should have a, I can notice already the burn time is so, so much less on both these. The burn time is a very critical uh, part. This one here is running down. It's almost like it's running rich on that one. Not so bad there. Um, when a um, burn time runs down, it's an indication of a rich mixture. When the burn time runs upwards, it's an indication of a very uh, lean mixture. Um, I like to rev the vehicle and check at different revs for the um, burn time to see what happens. But in this case, I'm not here to check things like that. I'm just here to see at idle what will happen with the combustion leak as we've got. Um, I've also believed Normally, a, um, with low combustion, that the um, resistance of burn is much lower, although it doesn't appear to be that noticeable here. But certainly, the burn time is a big getaway. We'll own the. Um, I just put the cursor on this one, number one, not number one, this would be, sorry, number um, four. Okay, we've got 1.83 milliseconds of burn time, which is quite acceptable. Come over this one here, messed up as it is. Um, we've got 1.14, quite a considerable uh, uh, amount lower than what the other one is. Let's go over to this other one, which will be number three cylinder. As we come over, oops. Again, just say one millisecond of burn time not really a sufficient amount. I would like to see at least 1.3 milliseconds or more, but in this case we're seeing the better cylinders at 1.8 milliseconds or more, so um, yeah, it's quite noticeable. So we'll get rid of our cursors. Let's just explode this up. Look at this one. We'll open this up. Look at that. What a mess. What a mess. Okay, let's get out of that one. And let's have a look at the, this one here, which is number Look at that one, much cleaner, much cleaner. So yeah, there's a lot of evidence um, that we can get from our um, primary and our secondary waveforms. Both of them are very valuable, both have uh, very similar patterns. They follow each other. They, um, there's no difference in the amount of value that we get from either of them. They're a mirror of each other. Um, but yeah, very interesting. I thought we should have a look at that. So just something to look out. Thank you. Thank you for watching this. This is part A. I'm going to move on to the um, Chrysler next, which will be part B, and uh, thank you for watching.